1998, a solution of 0.075 molarity of COBr2 is saturated with H2S, and the H2S concentration is 0.10 molarity, what is the minimum pH at which COS begins to precipitate? And then we have these two equations. So they give us the KSP for the COS, and then they give us this acid uh, concentration with H2S, with a, not an acid concentration, but a Ka expression for H2S. Okay, so what are we going to do here? Well, the question is asking, what is the minimum pH at which COS begins to precipitate? So it seems like in order to find that pH, I first have to find out what is the value in which COS is going to precipitate. So with that in mind, it seems like I have to use the first equation first, right? The number one equation, the first one first. So if we just take this information, they already told me that COS solid, and maybe I'll just write this out. So we have COS, that's a solid. This comes to equilibrium with CO2 plus, and that's aqueous. They give us, you know, they give us everything. So thank you for that. S2 minus aqueous with a KSP expression. Now that's 4.5 times 10 to the negative 27th. Let's just write out the KSP expression for our specific example. So in this case, it's just going to be equal to the concentration of the two products because remember, no solids allowed. So it would be just the concentration of CO2 plus and S2 minus. Now, what information did they tell us in this, in this question about COS or CO or S minus, right? Well, the only thing that they told me was that I'm starting off with 0 0.075 molarity of COBr2. Now, COBr2 is a soluble compound, right? Bromine is majoritively soluble, except for a couple of exceptions, but cobalt is not one of them. So that means that this will break down into CO2 plus and two Br minuses, mainly because there's two here. Now only pick the one that we care about. In this equation, the only one that comes up is CO2 plus. So I don't care about the two bromines. I just care about the CO2 plus. Now, just use your ratios. There's one COBr2 for every one CO2 plus. So if the total concentration is 0.075 molarity, the molarity of CO2 plus is also 0.075 molarity. So that's the number that I'm gonna put with the cobalt, 0.075. Now, they didn't tell me anything about S2 minus, so that's what I'm solving for. So I'm just going to label it as X. So let's see. Cobalt is 0 0.075, and the sulfur is X. And let's just solve for X. 4.5 times 10 to the negative 27th equals... Looks like we got 0 0.075 times x, okay, divide on both sides by 0 0.075. Cool, so we get x equals, let's see, 4.5 times 10 to the negative 27 divided by 0 0.075, I get six times 10 to the negative 26. Oh, as I write negative 23, okay. And that's the molarity. Keep in mind, that's the X value, right? And I didn't want that to be green again. There we go. So we know that the sulfide ion concentration is six times 10 to the negative 26th. Well, how is this gonna help me? Well, let's see. I already used this equation, so I can't use it again. But if I look in here, I found the missing link. The S2 minus is going to get transferred to S2 minus in the second equation. So the answer that I found for the first one, I now use as one of the variables in my second equation. So let's just rewrite this equation. We have H2S, and that's aqueous, coming together with 
two waters. That's a liquid. This comes to equilibrium between two H3O pluses. That's aqueous. Plus the S2 minus. And let's see, maybe I can just scooch this over a little bit just so that I have a little bit more room here because maybe I'll put this up. There we go. Because the K value is 1.0 times 10 to the negative 26. But now let's just write out the expression. Products divided by reactants. Keep in mind, remember, liquids don't count. So it seems to me that I have two products on the top divided by one on the bottom. So I have the H3O plus times the S2 minus divided by the H2S. And that H2 H3O plus, there's a two in front. So I have to square that. So I'm going to square it. Beautiful. And now let's just see. Well, we found out that the S2 minus was 6 times 10 to the negative 26. Anything else in the piece of information? Oh, they told me that the H2S is 0.1. So H2S, 0 0.1. Keep in mind that there's no water, so we don't care about that, right? And the only thing that's missing is well, I don't know what the h 3 plus concentration is, but that's okay. That's the variable. I'm going to label this as x. Now, you can label this as 2x because there's a 2 in front. But since this is the only compound that I'm solving for, I can just label it as x. I like to do it this way because, you know, if I'm in a rush, maybe on a test, and I don't have enough time to go back and times it by 2, I might lose a couple of points if it was a free response. So I'm just going to label it as x and just use that. So H3O plus is going to be x. The S2 minus is the 6 times 10 to the negative 26. And the H2S is the 0 0.1. I'm just going to work over here. So I have 1.0 times 10 to the negative 26. This equals, let's see, I've got two things on the top, one on the bottom. So I got x squared times 6 times 10 to the negative 26 divided by 0.1. Let's cross multiply. So this times this, and then just leave that numerator there. Maybe I'll move this over a little bit. So we get 1.0 times 10 to the negative 27th equals 6 times 10 to the negative 26 x squared, if we times this together. Let's just divide on both sides by 6 times 10 to the negative 26. That gets rid of that. And now we're just left, we're almost there. We're left with x squared equals... 1 times 10 to the negative 27 divided by 6 times 10 to the negative 26. And I'm just making sure that I'm writing this all down correctly. 0 0.0167. Okay, now we just have to take the square root because we have to undo that square. And 0 0.0167. Oops, square root of 0 0.0167. And now I get x equals 0 0.1292 molarity. And that was for H3O plus. So now I know that the H3O plus concentration, we just labeled it as x, and that's what x was. 0 0.1292 molarity. But they wanted to know that pH. This is going back to, to last chapter, right? What's the formula between H3O plus and pH? Yeah, pH equals the negative log of H3O plus or H plus. They mean exactly the same. So if I just plug in pH equals negative log 
of 0 0.1292, I will get the answer. Let's see. Negative log 0 0.1292. I get a really, 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 really low pH, but that's okay. pH equals how many sig figs? Two. So 0 0.89. Really low pH. So that's the minimum pH. I mean, it makes sense, right? Minimum, the lowest point should be a low number. The lowest pH in which that COS is going to precipitate, we need a pH of at least 0.89. And that's it. I really hope this one helped you out. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for viewing the video. I hope you guys are studying hard. Have a great day, and I will talk to you soon. Okay, bye-bye.